Welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. I'm your host, Matt Lagore. Now, if I told you that the majority is usually wrong, what would you say? Would you say, that's crazy, the majority is always right? And I'm not talking the, uh, what was that show that was on, uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I'm not talking about who wants to be a millionaire majority and ask the audience. I'm talking about the important things in life, like success, happiness, progress. Majority of people are not successful. As a matter of fact, 95% of people really are in debt and are not financially sound, whereas 5% of the people in this world control 95% of the wealth. Now, a lot of people take that number and get very upset with it, but it's really just the facts and there are reasons behind it. Now, 95% of the people aren't very happy. And why is that? Turn on the news, read the newspaper, listen to talk radio. Everybody's talking about the same stuff and it's always very upsetting. And what happens is they're getting nowhere. If you want to see where real success is, look where the progress happens. Look at someone like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos with Amazon or Mark Cuban or Mark Zuckerberg. What kind of incredible success they've had that was exponential. And why? Because they thought differently. It's very hard to think differently because we're controlled by peer pressure. We want to fit in. We don't want to be told we're stupid. Now, has there ever been a time you've had an idea that you thought was really good? I know I, I do that. And then you say, well, maybe it's not a good idea. Or somebody tells you, that's stupid. Don't do that. And you go, oh, yeah, you know what? They're right. And then a couple of years go by, and what happened? What do you see? You see your idea, and you go, hey, I, I thought of that. I thought of that idea. Did you know that? I thought of that. And people go, yeah, sure you did. You thought of that. Okay, all right. But you did think of it, and someone else took it to the next level. Now, as the years have progressed in my life, you know, now I'm 51 years old. When I have an idea, I trust it. I believe it. When I really feel it's good, I don't always have good ideas, but when I do, I go with it. And what I do is I try to talk to people who I feel are innovators and are progressive people. And when they agree with me or they have ideas or they elaborate on it, I know that I have a good idea. So a couple of weeks ago, I met someone who I'd never met before. And we started talking, we had coffee, and I told her what I did. And she started saying things to me that I'd thought of, but I hadn't taken action with. And I knew that as I was talking to her that I had a good idea and I was on the right track. And as a matter of fact, she gave me something, which I thought was very nice, since I didn't know her. She gave me this diamond. It's not a real diamond, because if it did, it'd be very expensive. It's a real pretty diamond, and it has the name of her company on it. And I have her here today with me, Charlene St. Jean. Charlene, welcome to my show. Thanks for having me, Matt. I really <laughs> and thank you it. for my diamond. You're very welcome. I we'll thought, bring you much success. Yes, I thought that was very nice, that I didn't even know you. And we sat down and you had some gifts for me. I thought that was just very thoughtful and kind to do that. It made me feel very like, like at peace and at ease. I was like, this person cares about me. I don't know why, but I feel like she cares about me because she gave me some gifts. So first of all, that, that's something I learned that day. I was like, you know, I never understood that really, why people give gifts like that. Uh, until that day, really, honestly, I was like, this was really nice. Because you had no ulterior motive. We were going to talk no. about you being on my show. You weren't going to pitch me on anything. Exactly. So before I go on and on about that, why don't you tell us what you do, what your, what your okay. business is and what your profession is. Okay, my business name is Purple Diamond. Uh, I actually started off as an advertising agency where I was going to be a media buyer and expanded into what's called marketing coaching. People have heard of business coaching. Mm -hmm. Marketing coaching is more specific to your sales and your marketing. How are you getting your clients? Are you gaining success with your business year after year? Uh, you know, today you have in the first two years for small businesses you lose about one-third of the businesses. They don't make it in the first two years. And in five years, you've already lost half of them. And by 10 years, only one-third of small businesses survive. So knowing that, you really need to have a special edge. And I saw it because when I launched the business in 2008, literally like six months later in September, um, the stock market crashed. Mm -hmm. And what I had as a business plan, because anyone who starts a business writes a business plan, I was going to do mostly media buying because my background was in TV advertising. I wrote TV commercials for years and sold them. 
So I said, let's use your expertise. I had worked in radio and TV. And so I was going to just be a media buyer because I love traditional advertising. And everything changed. And people weren't spending the money in traditional advertising. They were getting to what's called social media, being on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all the other social sites. So I really had to change things up. And people were coming up to me at different business networking groups and asking for suggestions or help with their business because they knew I had a long history of working in marketing. And I would give them great hints and tips, uh, things that would help them immediately to make more money. And I had a lawyer that was in the group that said, why would you do this for free? And she says, you know, I'd rather be gardening than sitting there giving my services away from free. And of course, a lawyer knows how to make money. And I thought, what am I thinking? I started this business to make money and for, in order for me to not to be part of that statistics, I've got to branch out. So I realized there were a lot of, biz a lot of really good people who had lost their jobs in 2008 yeah. and were taking from their 401ks to start a business. They really wanted to have what Mark Zuckerberg has. They, yeah. they, that was their dream and this was their timing. But they had never worked in sales and marketing. So they were passion, they had such passion for what they did, but they didn't know how to get it out to the people. And really that's that's what's the most important things with businesses that succeed, is that you know, that they don't sit there and let grass grow under their feet. They take action right yeah, away. Yeah. So, so that's how I got into marketing. I want to ask you a question. So yes. so like what what would be like the first thing you would say? Someone comes in like, well, first of all, define like a small business. Okay. So it's interesting because I work with a lot of solo entrepreneurs, people just, they're one man show, yeah. they do everything. Right. But then I also have small to, small to mid-sized companies. Um, an example of that might be like Beverly Athletic Club. It's a fairly sizable company. Uh, so you might have up to 50 people, 50 okay. employees, yep. uh, some full-time, some part-time. So it really has a range. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the average would probably be 25 employees for a okay. small business. All right. but, you know, so, so a small business know. comes to you, yeah. all right? Yeah. They're just starting out. They've got their whole nest egg in this business, right. all right? And they're trying to make a go of it. And you look at it, you know, they got a small customer base. What would be like one thing, like one simple thing you'd say to them to really like, get? let's get some stuff moving. I want you to do this first. Okay. So if they're a local business, I often say, look out to the community and you know expand your horizon join the local chamber mm -hmm. uh, there's there's groups out there for just business networking you know there's b and i's there's you know various different local venues you might join the rotary um, so you, the, the idea is to make more contacts mm -hmm. so the more people you know the more people that are going to hear about your story and help you succeed most people think, oh, I got to get a logo made or I need a website. Mm -hmm. or, yep. And you do need the, those things, yep. but you also need to have contacts. The average person only knows 250 people. I'm trying to get my clients to understand that we're looking for thousands. You know, you're building your own network. Yeah. So that's the first thing I tell them to do. So just get out there, grassroots, just yep. start passing out some cards, start meeting some people. Having one on ones. One on ones. Like we have. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But those are powerful, the one on ones. Yep. They really they are. are. And you don't know who you're talking to either, you yeah. know. Or who network. they know. Right, who they know. Yeah. So, okay, so you, you kind of told us what you do now. Yeah. Um, what is some of your background? Because I thought it was very okay. interesting. You know, it's, it, you, so I have you know, a really diverse background. Yeah. Um, if we really go way, way back, I'm the daughter of a salesman. My mm -hmm. dad designed business forms. So from the time it was probably two or three, I was out there trying to hustle business forms for my father. I'm one of six kids, second to youngest. Um, I really loved the fact he owned his own business. Uh, went on, did a lot of things in high school. I was the president of my junior achievement company for four years. Went into college and started off in a medical field because at the time they were all saying that's where the future is and found that I really missed business. And I got my degree in health service administration with a minor in marketing. And the reason it was health service administration was I was going to be an occupational therapist. I switched over. Thank thankfully, I did that. I just love business. So when I came out of college, you know, I went to work for a health clinic in Boston, and I was their public relations person. The, my title was community affairs coordinator, and so I was out there designing all their marketing material and actually calling on doctors and hospitals for them. So I loved it. I covered all of New England. Uh, I call them. A, I was a road warrior, mm -hmm. and I did that for several years until then. I had my kids got married, had my kids, did what 
some women do. I stayed home with my kids because I didn't think my husband could do a better job than I did. Mm -hmm. um, I had worked at Varian as their marketing person, so very diverse, medical to you know, uh, semiconductors, you know, so I had that. But when I came back into professionally, my kids were probably you know, just hitting middle school, so I took some time off and I applied for a job down in Gloucester and didn't understand really what I was applying for, but um, it was for a company at that time was New England Cable Vision turning into Frontier Vision. So what was Frontier Vision? No one had ever heard of it. They had literally just bought the company and I was applying for something and I thought it was to help, you know, one of these little, write something that's similar to like Yellow Pages or something like that. I didn't realize I'd be writing TV commercials and actually selling them. And thankfully, my honors English back in high school helped that I could write. So I sold TV commercials for years, um, loved it, worked for um, Frontier Vision, who got bought out by Adelphia Media Services. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Adelphia got bought out by Comcast. Yeah. Um, in there, I had also worked for a radio station, a local station in Beverly called 104.9. I had done newspaper, and I had the you know Beverly territory for the weekly paper. So you know my dad was in print, so that certainly made sense. And then I found that I really missed TV. I loved TV, so I went back to TV. And um, I did that for many, many years until you know Comcast was just taking up so many territories and I thought, let me try something closer to home because I was commuting to New Hampshire yeah. from Beverly. Yeah. And so I moved closer to home and and part of that was because I had a medical issue that made me want to come back home. I yeah. had survived uh, melanoma. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it makes you change what you're thinking of, what's yeah. most important. And my family was most important, and I wanted to be closer to there as far as, so I wasn't just traveling all the time. And I went to work for an internet company, and I sold, you know, email marketing and SMS text messaging before Twitter got hot, and I had a blast with it. And from there, you know, I was really happy because things were going well for m myself and my family. And my husband said, you know, you've always wanted to own your own business. And so that gave me the opportunity. I gave a three-month notice to the internet company Net Atlantic in Salem and started my own company. And then the stock market crashed. So, you know, <laughs> but good things come from bad. Yes, they do. Yeah. So, now, there's a theme that runs through your life. Yeah, okay? it is. And one of the themes I've noticed from talking to you, and, and I just kind of picked up on this now, is that you like don't you don't let your career dominate you. Yeah. You let your personal life, your family, your relationships, yeah. your health dictate where what you do. Right. Am I right? That is absolutely true. You know, being the daughter of a, a, a father that owned his own business, I saw stress, mm -hmm. and I saw the hours he put in, and I said, I want to have you know, work life and balance. If I'm going to do this, it's work life or balance. And I'm actually on my second marriage. Mm -hmm. I think I burnt out the first marriage in the sense that I was a workaholic. Yeah. And I learned from it. I learned from it. From every negative thing in your life, something positive comes from sure. it. Yeah. And I have an amazing husband, Jason, and uh, he's the reason I have the company, and my two kids. And I really feel that, you know, if you're going to do something, you do it well. So I recognize that to do well in business, you have to have a good home life. You have to have a good supportive family and partner yeah, yeah. and people that live into your dream with you. You take them along with you, but you don't want to step on their toes to get where you need to go. Yeah. So, you know, it's always been important. In fact, beginning of the year, January, my first granddaughter, my granddaughter was born on New Year's Eve, and I made the business decision that I was going from a five-day work week to a four, and I'm very busy. Yeah. So to do that at this point in my, my business, uh, I'm almost 10 years in, was probably not a good business decision, but as a marketing coach, I tell, tell a person it's a great one if you have the right reasons behind it. Mm -hmm. And the right reasons was that I was going to take Wednesdays off to watch my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. I could have easily paid for the daycare. Yeah. It wasn't about that. I want time to know Ariana, and um, this gives me that opportunity. My clients all knew. Yeah. And they're all supportive of it. And actually, my business, you know, didn't, it was a little bit of a hiccup in the beginning because mm -hmm. Wednesday's not the best day of the week to take off. Sure. Middle yeah. of the week. But, you know, you make it work. So yesterday I had off. 
So I want to tell you right there, that's yeah. what I was talking about before. The yeah. majority would say, work, 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 right. take your opportunities, move to New York City, yeah. uh, all right, or at least downtown Boston, yeah. right? Not Beverly. How are right. you going to succeed in Beverly, right? I know. You know? But you, t you, thought, you thought about what was important to you, right. you know, for your heart and mind to be ha to satisfied, right? And you're very happy. I'm extremely yeah. happy. You're a very pleasant person, and it's not put on. It's genuine. Yeah. You know, and I can tell that. And if it was put on, I wouldn't have said anything. There but you go. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Matt. <laughs> but it's not. So, like, I can see that, you know, you put your priorities first. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, that's a really tough call. Right. Because everybody will tell you not to do that. I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people will, well, right? It's, it's interesting if you, you know, I do a lot of reading, like blogs and, yeah. and whatnot, information that's out there. And most businesses, if you look at some of our European con uh, countries, they give a lot of time for vacation. We don't do that so much in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I'm married to a Canadian who was, mm -hmm. that was the first thing he had to get used to here working in the Boston market. He's a systems engineer. And it's like, you guys are workaholics. You never take time. And I said, you have to, you, we have to make time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the businesses that are doing really well understand that their employees have to be happy. Mm -hmm. And if you're not happy, how do you go in and you know, do your best? And if you're trying to sell your business and you're grumpy, you got up that morning and you're like, you're exhausted because you've worked you know, 12 hours the day before, you're not your best. And you know, nobody needs to listen to negativity. So. Find your balance. I mean, whatever it is. I've had some clients who actually said, my balance is my business. And, you know, they work 24-7, and I'm like, you need to stop. You know, because your business should thrive even when you're away from it. And you should be even better when you come back to it. So that's one of the things I do help business owners to realize that they deserve that time. They started their business to enjoy life a little bit more. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. The first couple of years, I worked a lot of hours because mm -hmm. you have to, to to launch a new business. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, down the road, if you're you're three, four years in and you're still working crazy hours, you mm -hmm. need to call a marketing coach. Yes, I'm going to make sure you're not doing that anymore. <laughs> See, that that's another thing yeah. is that you know you can't just rely on yourself right. to be successful. You Hire need your input. Yeah, you need to you need to have input from people. Yep that will give you solid right. advice. You know, I, I remember I got that advice from somebody was that I was traveling too much. Right. You're traveling too far. And my excuse was, well, you know, that's where the work is. And right. they were like, no, the work is here. You're just choosing to travel too much. Right. And lo and behold, when I traveled less, I had, I made just as much money yeah. and I, in less time. Right. So, you know, a good coach makes a difference. So yeah. would you consider yourself a, a straight up marketing coach or are you a business coach too? All right. I like to say I'm more of a marketing coach. I've actually worked for businesses that have both a business coach and myself. The reason I say that is I have always been a senior level salesperson and marketing person. So you go with your strengths. Mm -hmm. um, am I a financial person? I know numbers and I do know what it takes to get to the next level, but I don't have an accounting background. And I really believe that you need to be true to who you are. So I market myself. I am a marketing coach. And the people that truly need me are the people who are sitting there struggling. I do work with marketing departments. You can't be all places at all times. Um, I'm out and about in the actual area. I do mostly marketing coaching locally. I stick mostly to the Boston, north of Boston market for a reason, because I know it well. Um, so I can help them. I know the contacts that they're, they're missing. I understand social media more, probably because I spend more time on it. I've trained probably over 200 companies now in social media marketing. I go in and do a seminar for their mm -hmm. employees or one-on-one -on -one training with the CEOs who say, I have to learn this thing called Facebook. What is it? <laughs> and I laugh, you know. So. I, I'm surprised how many people, how many businesses don't have Facebook, aren't on Facebook, oh, yeah. don't have a presence. So let's, let's touch on the social media part yeah. of it because that, that can be a tough one. Even for someone who knows is on Facebook, right. to use it for a business is kind of a little bit more difficult. It's really tricky. So here's one of the reasons why businesses fail. They start the business with very little cash. The, you know, they don't have the money to really get their business off the ground by being mm -hmm. able to hire their weaknesses right from day one. 
So they can't hire a social media marketer to come in and work their company and do it correctly. So they're trying to wear all these hats. And it's tough, you know, you know Facebook in particular. They, they want to make money also. So they Facebook. Kinda, Facebook yeah. itself. Yeah. And I love Facebook. It, but, it is but a great it's a business, site. right? It's a business. And they make money when people are paying to place advertisement mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. when they, you know, promote their post. They push their post out there. So a business will come to me and say, yeah, I have no money for social media. I have zero dollars for to run an ad on Facebook. And I'm like, okay, you have no money whatsoever. So what can you do? So I usually advise them to set up their Facebook business page mm -hmm. and also really pump up their personal page. And the reason for the personal page, Facebook right now has an algorithm that about 10% of your posts, your ads that you put up on your business page that are not paid, get seen. So say I have a thousand people that are following Purple Diamond, only 10% sees what I put out. So to up my odds, I taught my clients you like your own post as yourself. So I go in and like it as Charlene, and then I share it to my own personal page. And people yeah. say, but I want to keep my personal separate from my, uh, my business. Well, if you really are about promoting your business on social media, you can't do that today. Right. Not right. locally. Nationally, mm -hmm. yes, but the national brands have the money to place ads. Mm -hmm. If you have no budget to place ads, you have to learn the tricks, and there's a lot of tricks involved. Um, you know, putting a description to your cover and to your, your logo on your company page. A lot of people don't even know you can do that. Mm -hmm. And a, a good social media marketer will teach you how to do that. So there are some tricks for people that have very little budget, but requires hiring a marketing coach. Yeah. Now, one thing I've noticed is that, like a lot of people say that, oh, I, I want to keep everything separate. Yeah. I don't want to bombard my friends and everything. Um, but it's a different world we live in yeah. now. And I think that people understand that you're going to get a lot more posts, a lot more activity yeah. than we ever got in the past. And I, I don't think it bothers them anymore. Right. Um, you know, of course, I do believe, and tell me if I'm right about this, yeah. you don't need to post five times a day. You don't. You don't. Okay? For your business page, five times a week, great. Yeah. Just keep your page from looking like you're not in business anymore. The biggest problem is, you know, because of those stats where people, you know, so many businesses go out of business, you could have dead pages out there. A dead page is anything that hasn't been touched in, you know, a couple weeks. Really? So yeah. if you're sitting there and you're lucky to do it like once a month, you're giving the wrong impression to anybody who goes to your page because they're mm -hmm. thinking, well, this guy really, he's probably a part time or maybe this is a hobby for him. Yeah. So you want to give your best self. And you can load, like on Facebook, you can put them, like you could sit down for a month and, and schedule out posts for the whole month. Mm -hmm. They've really made it easier for your company to look good on, on Facebook. Um, and I'm just saying Facebook, but there's others. Instagram, sure, yeah, right. Twitter, there's a lot of different ones out there. I say Facebook the most because that is still the one that has the most, you know, people that are actually there during the month and the highest one in the Fortune 500 companies invest heavily into it. And I think everybody, when you say social media and yeah. you say Facebook, they know what you they mean. They think it's one and the same. Yeah, you're talking about them all. And yeah. in, in a way, aren't they kind of all one and the same? Because you can connect them all now. You can connect right? them. Well, there are great you know apps out there. You know, There's like Hootsuites and, and different yeah. companies that are putting out uh, programs so a, a company can. Believe it or not, as you know, my business, I still don't use any of those apps. I go to each site individually. Occasionally on Instagram, I'll quickly send out a quick um, visual uh, image uh, out to Twitter and, and um, Facebook at the same time. But for the most part, I'm genuinely there. And anybody who knows me knows I'm there. If you're on my Facebook and you've connected with me, I always like to connect with me personally mm -hmm. and with my business. Mm -hmm. I, I put up a question every day and mm -hmm. I put it in my branding color of purple because I wear purple Monday through Friday for purple diamond. So you don't forget me. Um, <laughs> and, I, you know, so I may put more posts on my personal page than my business page. And that's just to keep things interesting. Yeah, yeah, and I like it. And they're not what I ate for the day. It's not those You're not taking things. pictures of your latest meal, right? No, but I will tell you this past year, anyone who knows me, my daughter Ariana Jade is Facebook famous. She has her own hashtag. So... 
you do see a lot of pictures of my granddaughter. Oh, that's fine. Come on, that makes you more personal exactly. anyway. Exactly. So I want to ask you a couple of like questions, quick yep. questions. Where'd the purple come from? Okay, so started thinking about starting a business, yeah. and I always have known from working in, in sales and marketing that when you meet someone, you should smile, and when you first meet a person, you're telling them about your business. So you pick a name that's going to make you happy. So, of course, purple is my favorite color. Yeah. So purple was a great name, you know, but back then there was also purple cow, and I didn't even think about that at the time, that book. Um, but purple was my favorite color, and then I had just gotten married two years before to a to Jason, and I looked down at my ring, and I went, purple diamond, doesn't that sound great? And as any great marketing coach will do, after they come up with a name, you can come up with a story. So I tell people, purple in ancient times is the color of great wealth, royalty wore it. Mm -hmm. A diamond is a stone of commitment. My commitment to you is that I'll bring you great wealth. Success wears the purple diamond my tagline. That's excellent. So there you go. That's what <laughs> That's a marketing That's really coach well done. Do. <laughs> That's really well done. All right. So we've got a couple minutes left. Yep. So what's the future for you? Like what, 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 what did you say your neck, your direction is now? It's, it's interesting because a marketing coach should know that right off the top. And I had to think about that some because, you know, I'm so happy with what I'm doing to think of like where I want to expand to. And I thought about it I'm really great locally, and, and people know me because I'm on the cha you know I'm on a lot of different things, chamber and different different business organizations. But I'm seriously considering expanding nationally, uh, and to do it online because I have a strong online presence. Actually, one of my first clients was from China because I used to belong to a, a, another social media site uh, way before Facebook even started, which was called Beliefnet.com. So it's interesting that. I, you can have an effect. I have a friend in Australia who will probably see this on YouTube and say, oh, she remembered me. I had met them also there. And I'm like, I'd like to take it nationally. I'd like to do more as a marketing coach nationally and maybe do more online group type uh, coaching so we make it affordable. Um, I'm actually very affordable local. I mm -hmm. want to put that out there. Yeah, you are. Uh, yeah. You know, I have solo entrepreneurs that have very small budgets and I try to make it affordable so you can work with me one-on-one -on -one, because I really do want to see you succeed. But I'd love to take it nationally, and who knows where Purple Diamond will go from there. That's great. I'll oh, dazzle them. You'll dazzle them. And one, I want to show everybody one more time, just remember the Purple Diamond. I want to get it the right way. The Purple Diamond. Isn't that nice? Look at that. I brought that home, and my wife immediately said, oh, is, is that for me? And I said, no, it's for me. It's my Purple Diamond. <laughs> I actually had someone who came back and said, can I have one for my wife? And, you know, I do get that. Every client gets one of those to yeah. have on their desk. Yeah. And there, it, I, I like to look at it and polish yeah. it and look into it and see if I can see my future. And it always yeah. looks very bright in there. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to have it on the screen and everything, how to get in touch with you. Right. But why don't you just say your website? Okay. It's purplediamondmarketing.com. Mm -hmm. It's also purple-diamond.net, but that's not a great one to find because people don't understand hyphens and underscores. Yeah. So purplediamondmarketing.com. And Facebook? Facebook, Purple Diamond LLC. Okay, excellent. So we're yeah. going to find you there. Yep. Thank you so much for being on the show. You are an excellent thank guest. Thank you for having me, Matt. I really appreciate you're it. You're very welcome. You're it's very fun. welcome. All right. Well, thank you for watching another episode of The Matt Lagore Show. You can find me on Facebook uh, with The Matt Lagore Show. You can find me on YouTube. Uh, just put in search term The Matt Lagore Show, and I have other episodes there. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.